Aaron Heinzelman here with D2Football.com. I'm talking with Team Com, Team Kong, that com, calmness, the Greg Grizzolano. He covers Pitt State for the website. They do a great job down there. If you uh, haven't checked it out, I suggest you do. Greg, you and I sat next to each other at the uh, Fall Classic before we were actually formally introduced, and uh, it was quite a game down there at Arrowhead, wasn't it? What a game, man. I'm telling you, that might have been the most exciting uh exciting football game I've ever been to in my life. It sure was. Uh, that first half was, I, I, I called it disgusting in my, uh, my, 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 my wrap-up column uh, that I posted on Sunday. Is there any other word for how Pitt State played on Saturday in the first half? Man, I think that first the questions that the, the people had about this team coming into the season, you know, were they good enough to, to compete? You know, was their, was their quarterback uh, more than just a, more than just a, a good athlete, could he actually move the ball downfield through the air when he had to against the defense that you know we knew was going to come out and try to try to stymie Pitt State's rushing attack? I mean, all those questions were on display, and it looked like the, it looked like Pitt State didn't have any of those answers, at least none of the answers that you'd want them to have in that situation. Yeah, they really really struggled in that first half. Let me put them up six points now. At halftime, I don't know what happened, but they came out a whole new football team. Um, I think in the in, in in the first half, it was a lot of run up the middle, run up the middle, option to Dickey and, and Wilson, option, option, run up the middle. Real repetitive, it seemed like to me. Real not creative. It, that certainly changed on the second half, didn't it? Unbelievable. You sure don't. That was a great play. We're talking about the 49-yard pass from uh, Andrew Castaneda to John Brown. That really uh, helped spark the, the, the comeback for Pitt State in the game against Northwest Missouri this week. Now, uh, second half to first half again, uh, Just uh, and it wasn't just that play, it seemed like. It, they, it seemed like uh, Coach Beck was a lot more open to, to passing with Zach Dickey, who I, I've, I've talked about almost ad nauseum in my columns this year that you need to pass the ball in the conference to in this conference to win football games. And you can have a quarterback like Zach Dickey or even, you know, like uh, Travis Partridge just showing a little bit in at Missouri Western, you know, you can have a guy that can hurt you on with his feet, but until you can get a guy to put up some num numbers through the air and to make your wide receivers a, the, the playmakers that they can be, you're going to have real trouble in this league is, does Pitt State fall into that? Are, are 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 they in trouble if Zach Dickey can't repeat his second half performance this year? See, I I'm gonna I'm gonna respectfully disagree with you because because Pitt State has made it made it their bread and butter that they win on the ground and they win in this conference on the ground. And you could throw the last couple of years out the window as far as as far as that formula being successful successful for them. But I mean historically when Pitt State's rushing the ball for more than for more than 200 yards a game, you know they're winning. They're winning ball games, and they're, they've they've always been built to do that. Does it help to, to have that that other dynamic element to game plan for? Absolutely. And I think that if 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 Dickey can continue to replicate the success he had passing the ball in the second half of this game, that this, this Pitt State football team is going to be really hard to beat because they can hurt you in so many ways, and they're that they're less one dimensional. And just saying, okay, we've just got to make sure that, that Dickey and, and Wilson and and, and Solomon Walk and Eric Spradling, the, Eric Spradling, Eric Love, and, and Jason Spradling, the other running backs that they have, don't hurt you on the ground. And the difference, I think, especially through the air this year, is that we have playmakers at wide receiver that we haven't always had in the past. I mean, we've got some guys that can flat out, flat out scorch people. And that, and I think that that was the difference in the second half. You know, our receivers got open. And, and Dickie started putting the ball in their hands and making plays, and you know that was all she wrote. Yeah, it was really quite the the, the second half performance they put up. But it wasn't just on the offense; the defense really showed up in the second half. What do you think? What what, what was there? One player you saw? Was there one play that happened? Why? I mean, I think we can obviously say the interception after that first long touchdown to John Brown. 
really sparked the defense and got him going. But uh, other than that play by Pete, was was there anything else that, that you think got him going and uh, allowed them to be able to continue their pretty dominant performance in the second half? Everything that I've seen this year with this team, as far as defense goes, it starts with the play with the defensive line. They have a lot of guys that are big, that are athletic, that hustle and make plays, and they're, they're too deep pretty much at every position on that line. And, you know, they just they disrupt people's timing. They get in the backfield. They they disrupt plays. I mean, that's that's where that's where the defense, you know, that's where they earn their keep as far as as far as being effective. And I think that you know, in, in this game, the defense came out energized. You know, and you had you had Spencer Worthington and Nate, and Nate Drayling making some sacks. You know, you had guys hitting the quarterback, and ultimately, you know, they knocked Northwest quarterback out of the game. You know, because they kept getting that consistent pressure, and that's where, and that was the, that was the, the matchup that Coach Beck spotlighted in his in his press conference prior to the game. He said the key to the game will be how Northwest's offensive line matches up with Pitt State's D line. Obviously, in the first half, you know, matchup advantage to Northwest, but then Pitt comes out in the second half, and 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 they they held the highest scoring offense, you know, to seven points, an incredible performance. It really, really was just uh, flat out amazing. The absolute opposite of disgusting, like I like I wrote in my column. Now, you, uh, we, you and I were talking before I started recording, and you, you said you've been around the Pitt State program at least a, a fan of for years and years. So you, you, you're a little more familiar with the long term history than some uh, that might be listening to this, or even I am. You know, I'm fairly new to the MIAA at MIAA game, but I, I, I think in the last five years or so. There's a there was uh, Northwest has earned the respect and the and the thought especially at the end when when they uh, when they were able to score that touchdown with Jake Soy in the end that you thought oh boy here it goes again off or not were were, were you as a longtime Pitt State fan and now someone who covers the the uh, program for Team Kong was were were you worried there at the end? It, it, it certainly didn't look good. I mean I felt like there was a lot of time on. <laughs> the clock you know after after they scored if we tried to march down real quick and score that can set up a, another late game situation but I think that for the most part the way they came out the way they played that whole second half you know I, I didn't have too much too much doubt in my mind that they just weren't they just weren't gonna let that let that game get away from and really it's interesting because you know Northwest you know had some key penalties in the second half and they kind of you know I mean they they kind of imploded. I don't want to say that they that they lost the game for themselves, but you know, you see a twelve man on the field penalty late in the fourth quarter. I mean, just you know, things like that. You know, going against going against their team. I mean, that's you know, that's tough, man. And when you when you see things like that happen, you've got to feel pretty good, pretty confident that the team that you're rooting for is going to be okay when they're not making those same mistakes. And they played with you know the Gorillas played with a lot of, of poise and composure in that second half and a lot of intensity, but it never got. You know, it never got to the point where people were showboating or taking off their helmets or, or things of getting rough. It was just a good, hard-fought game the whole way through. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It was uh, it's, it was certainly a nice performance by or a great performance by Pitt State, but uh, you're right. Northwest certainly had a part in it in that second half with a lot of silly penalties. Uh, just a, not a very good throw by Blake Christopher for that interception by Jason Pete. Now, take me back to the. Uh, the end of the we're getting towards the end of the first half there, and it's it's twenty one nothing, or is it was that the end of the first quarter? Either way, you're down twenty one nothing. Your offense hasn't done much. You're dri- you, you 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 drive the ball, um, you, you get into the red zone. I was a little disappointed that they that they st- that they stalled on the third and a couple yards. I think it was they ran up the middle. Didn't get it. Yeah, so was- so so you kick a field goal, but. The, Go ahead. <laughs> now, those play calls right there were really, at, in the moment, seemed really questionable. Now, obviously, you know, Pitt State came away with the victory, so you know, good, good job by by Coach Beck and, and, and the offense, you know, scoring enough points that they needed. But yeah, that clearly, you know, my friend Ryan Atkinson, who's also a Pitt State alum, he works for the Joplin Globe, and he's sitting right beside me. And we're both just scratching our heads, going, you know, why aren't they, why aren't they trying to punch it in here? Let's go! You're down, you're down three scores. What the field goal going to do, especially when you know Northwest looks like they could march down the field, you know, at will and score on you. I mean, it was it was definitely something that had had the game gone the other way, I think you would have seen a lot of a lot of questions. 
questions about those decisions and, and the decision to not go forward or to play it safe. But, you know, ultimately, ultimately they, they played it safe. They took the points when they could get them, and they got them, fortunately. You know, their, their kicker came through for them. Yeah. So, well, you know, it worked out in the end. But, yeah, I think if it, if it had gone a different way, and if Pitt State, you know, field goal kicker missing, missing a crucial kick or, you know, something like that, you know, one of those – Dickey throwing a pick or somebody else fumbling or something like that happening and the game goes the other way for Pitt State I think I think you have to question question that decision about whether it's a good idea to not be more aggressive you're playing the number one team in the nation and you know they're going to get their points and Pitt State ought to be able to get his points in those situations so why not go for it yeah it certainly did work out for him and Ben Beck said after the game you know sometimes it's just good to get on the board and I didn't see it at the time but it but but it sure worked out now Let's look ahead. They've got five, what are they, five and others, six games left on the schedule. And there's a couple. You've got you got Fort Hayes next, and, and, then, and then there's. We've, one, got, we've got five, five, five games and an open date. Five games and an open date. That's, that, that, sound, that sounded right. I was looking at the schedule. I thought there was only five games left, but I didn't think the math added up. So only ten games this year. Uh, five games left. You've got Fort Hayes. You've got Lincoln. And you've got uh, Missouri Southern there at the end with two tough games. Uh, kind of sandwiched in the middle there, Washburn and Central. Now, those are uh, uh, definitely both going to be tough games. And you can't overlook the other get teams e- either. But, you know, you hope you can get past the, 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 the bottom end of the conference now that Pitt State has kind of established themselves as the as a, a, a top-tier team once again in the MIAA. So talk about the, the, the games coming up, Washburn or Central Missouri. What game, or is it both? Uh, really, is is the the tough one? Do you think coming up for Pitt State and why? It seems like it seems like historically, or at least in in the recent history since I've been since I've been in college and really kind of started paying attention, you know, with the things that have been going on with the, with the team again. Yeah, you know, it seems like that that Central Missouri game is always always kind of a shootout, always kind of an intense game. I think that I think that most people would feel better about that game if they were you know. If they were playing, if they were playing Central at Pitt State as opposed to on the road, so that definitely could be could be a game that you might want to watch. I mean, it's it's not going to be an easy an easy road to uh, to an undefeated season for sure. And Washburn, of course, you know they're ranked higher than Pitt State or Northwest right now. And having that game that late in the season, I mean, you'd, you'd like to think that the winner of that contest, you know, emerges with with either the outright MIAA crown or at least a share of it, a share of the conference championship so those are definitely two huge games but you know the biggest thing that, that people are talking about or have been talking about here here in town the, the last few days after the after the, the fall classic win is you know not not fall asleep at, at, at Hayes you know and then not having mm-hmm. a win down there mm-hmm. you know having having ridden all this you know having ridden the emotional roller coaster and gone from you know just just the, the brink of of not only getting getting beat by your rival, but getting, you know, and looking like you're going to get embarrassed there in the first half, the coming back and, and really shocking the world and playing, you know, out of your mind, fully, you know, realizing your potential as a team and what this team could do, and then to have a letdown against the team that, you know, on paper, Pitt State shouldn't have any problems with. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Hayes, uh, you never, you never know, like I said, you never know what can happen, and they can, you uh... They've got some weapons there on that football team, so it's going to be interesting to see how they, uh, I don't know, rebound is the right word, but how they come back from a great, great win at Arrowhead Stadium. Um, Greg, YouTube limits me to 15 minutes on these, and we're at 13.57, so I think we're going to have to cut it about short. But real quick now, I want you to tell me, if you had to call it right now, how many wins does Pitt State get in the regular season, and how far do they get into the playoffs? Putting you on the spot, and you've got forty-four seconds. Go. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'd like to think that uh, you know they might have one loss uh, by the by the end of the regular season. You know, share of the conference championship, and you know, a couple of home playoff victories uh, for the Gorillas. I mean, they, they've certainly shown me that when, when they play at their best, like they played that second half at Arrowhead, you know, this team can compete with anybody. You know, they can they can run, they can throw. They have a, a very aggressive, effective defense, and they've got great special teams play. So, I mean, all the all the, all the pieces are in place there. They've got a coaching staff that's willing to get creative, that's willing to think out of the box, that can keep their kids, you know, 
bring them back from the brink of not of a not just not just this 